since I was young, one of the things that I've looked forward to most is having my own hunting property. This dream became a reality just over a year ago for me. Me and my wife were looking for some property to build a house on and we found an 18 acre chunk of land that uh, we ended up purchasing. And so we closed on our property at the very end of 2016. And right away, I mean, I was mapping out, you know, just everything that I could possibly do, coming up with all these different plans and strategies to, to uh, do food plots and different things like that. But the dream has always been for me to take a piece of property that might be a pretty decent chunk of land to hunt on and turn it into something fantastic to make it a deer haven, a paradise for them. A place that every deer in the area would be crazy not to use. To kick this whole uh, 18 acre property habitat management series off, I wanted to start by creating a video that would detail out the advantages and disadvantages that I have with my property. The first advantage that I want to talk about is that the property that I have is located in a fairly remote place. I would consider that an advantage. Uh, you're not going to have tons of houses just lined up along the street, uh, you know, with lots of competition for every deer that's there. Um, so I would consider that an advantage. This, this leads also into my second advantage is that this property is, uh, it's only got one road bordering it. So in other words, three sides of my property are completely surrounded by woods. And this can be a great advantage because then I get to do with the property and utilize the property to get the deer on different segments of the property and not have to worry about them being right up next to a road uh, or people being able to see way into my property from two or three sides. So it really is... Uh, a very nice advantage to have that wood lot going on three different sides. Third advantage for this property is that uh, there is some pretty decent diversity of habitat in terms of the trees. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of different ages of trees. I've got some very mature aspen, uh, some very mature maples, uh, but then on the same side I've also got a lot of just low dense brush, uh, you know, a lot of saplings growing up. I've also got a ton of balsams, big and small. So I've got a lot of diversity uh, it, with the age of my trees on the property. The fourth advantage is that with this good diversity of uh, ages of trees on my property, uh, it leads to a lot of good cover. Um, you know, I've got a lot of sections where there's, you know, there's just a lot of balsams and balsams really do uh, create a good visual barrier throughout the whole entire property. So that's a, a really great um, aspect of this property is just the good cover that it has. The fifth advantage to this property, there isn't an overwhelming amount of hunting pressure there. So that could be an advantage as well is just that uh, you know, the deer right specifically around my property are not going to be getting uh, hammered the whole season. Another advantage, this would be my sixth advantage to this property, is that I would consider there to be a fair number of hunters around my area that are big buck hunters. Um, you know, there's, for the most part, not a lot of uh, spikes that get shot, not a lot of uh, you know, even two and a half year old bucks that get shot uh, in this area. There's uh, just a pretty decent group of people that are pretty serious about their hunting that live around me. So I would consider that another advantage because that helps create this scenario where uh, more bucks are going to reach maturity because they're not being shot when they're young. The seventh advantage to my property is that it's located in an area that's traditionally been a pretty decent area for hunting. The eighth advantage is that this property is what I would consider a blank slate. In other words, it is a, the entire track is just a solid piece of timber. Uh, apart from a pipeline that goes through the back edge of my property and the actual building site of our home, there is nothing 
that has been previously done to this property. And that's really nice because I'm not having to um, try to work around somebody else's strategy for this property. I'm able to kind of make it my own. Another advantage, my house is on the property. And why I would consider this to be an advantage is that the deer are going to be more accustomed to me and my family's scent. Uh, whenever they are on my property, for the most part, if the wind is blowing in the right direction, they will smell us or they will smell our house or they will smell whatever it is that we have up here by the house. They're gonna know that we are there. And I think that that can be an advantage because they're going to have smelled us so often, pretty much every time they're on our property. The final advantage that I have for this video, there's not much for people food plotting in this general area. There are a few food plots and uh, just north of me, you know, a mile, maybe even a little less than a mile, there's uh, uh, sometimes some soybean fields. But really there's not much agriculture in this area. There's not a lot of food plots or people that are really just drawing in uh, deer numbers through those food plots. So by me being able to put in some food plots, it should be just a high quality spot to attract deer. Moving now into the disadvantages of my property. The, f the first disadvantage is that the, pro the, the soil doesn't drain real great. Um, it's not that it's entirely just straight swamp. Uh, it's it's that the the property when it rains it there's a tendency to get a lot of puddles that'll start. I'm gonna have to work around the soils, you know, and, and having food plots that uh, are more um, flooding resistant. I would say uh, having food plot seed that can be in standing water for a few days or two, you know, just to get it through that time until the the water does seep into the soil a little bit. So that is definitely going to be a big disadvantage. The second disadvantage to this property is that the house is on the property. And earlier I had said that that was an advantage, but on the swing side of that, the disadvantage uh, of having your house on this property, especially with small acreage, is that that just took away uh, a fair chunk of timber that is no longer usable for hunting purposes. Now limiting myself to probably closer towards 15 acres that I can actually use as hunting ground. The third disadvantage is simply put, small acreage. It's just a small property. Uh, and this limits me in a lot of different ways, but two of the ways that it's gonna really limit me is in my access to the property. Um, if the deer are able to see me from the food sources it's really going to create this attract and repel. You're attracting the deer to the property, but then through your access and through your use of the property, you repel the deer. So that is one of the dilemmas that I'm going to face. Now, I do have good cover on my property already, so it won't be quite as big of an issue, um, but I'm going to have to be very careful since it's small acreage of having good access to the property where I'm not spooking all the deer off of the food sources. Uh, this also can be an issue in the fact that I will not be able to have um, or not have as much ground to be able to turn into good quality food source. With small acreage, you don't have the luxury of putting in a 10 acre food plot. Uh, I mean, pretty much for the most part, anything I'm going to be putting in is going to be very small. Uh, the, the big destination plot that I'm hoping to put in is going to be just over an acre, like an acre and a quarter or something like that. And that's about all I can fit uh, without compromising my access so that the deer can see me and I spook everything off the food plot anytime I go to hunt. The fourth disadvantage to this property is that in my specific area, there the deer numbers aren't fantastic. Um, on trail camera this last year, I mean, I was looking at a handful of bucks uh, and handful of does. One of the disheartening things about the property when I first got it is that I had a trail camera out behind the house uh, and I had a group of four big mature does and there was not a single fawn with any one of those does. So that just right there in and of itself, that's just such a limiting factor when you can't even keep the fawns. 
that is uh, a lot to do with consistent predators that we have in our area. They get hunted, these deer get hunted 24 seven. You've got wolves, you've got bears, coyotes, the bobcats. Uh, we even on occasion have a few cougars that are running through this area. So there is a lot of hunting pressure on these deer, not just from humans, um, but just year round pressure. Uh, another aspect of this too is just the winters are a little bit harder up here in the Northwoods, so that in and of itself is going to uh, keep the deer numbers um, from really escalating a whole lot. The next disadvantage is just that there is not much for elevation. Right where my house is located is probably the best elevation change, and we're talking maybe a four foot rise. Um, pretty much the whole rest of my property there is a one to two foot variation uh, in one spot specifically. I I call it Pancake Ridge because as a joke because it's um, you're talking like a three foot rise of a ridge. It's it, and it's like maybe f like five yards wide and twenty yards long. So I mean we just don't have much for structure, which leads into my next point. Uh, that one of the challenges I'm going to face is establishing bedding areas. Um, you know, one of the problems with big woods areas is that deer could bed wherever they want. I mean, it is so hard to get deer to bed in one specific spot. It's not like in farm country where you've got 6,000 acres of field and you've got this little 10 acre patch of woods. Well, you know they're going to be bedding in that 10 acre patch of woods. Uh, it's not that type of scenario here. Um, the other thing too is that with the structure not being really there, it's not like I know, okay, yeah, the bucks are going to be bedding on this point right out here um, because they're going to have all the visibility looking down and the ridge and everything and they'll have the cover behind them. That's not the case here. So I'm going to have to <clears throat> figure out how to uh, create some good hinge cut bedding areas that are going to produce the security that does would like and bucks. Now the other disadvantage that goes along with this bedding theme is that there is um, not a lot of property to actually establish as bedding. There's a lot of challenges that uh, a small property presents in terms of bedding and for the most part I'm probably going to be relying upon bedding happen happening off of my property versus on my property. Um, but I would still like to create that scenario so that if they do feel comfortable betting on my property that they would do that. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that's nice about when you can get them to bet on your property is you know where they're betting. If they're going off on my neighbor's property it's going to be uh, a quite a bit more challenging um, to hunt it effectively uh, because I might have deer coming from the exact wrong direction. The seventh disadvantage is just that I'm going to be, have to be very careful with the amount of hunting that I do on this property. Uh, you know, it's hard for me because I'm excited to hunt this property. Big bucks just aren't going to tolerate that. Um, I might be able to keep some does on the property, but uh, big bucks will tend to skirt and avoid that. So my hunting pressure is going to be very minimal. I like to hunt as often as I possibly can. I'm going to have many public land spots where I can get in on some good deer and hunt them there, but then when the conditions are right, be able to hunt my property and not over hunt it. The eighth disadvantage to this property is being that the soil is wet, it's going to limit what kind of equipment I can get back on this property. That in and of itself is going to make this property much more labor intensive. The next disadvantage is just that my guess is, and I still haven't done a soil test yet, but my guess is that the soil is not going to be real great. It may be a pH more of in the five and a half to six range. Um, so it, and maybe even lower, I don't know. I, I still have to do a soil test, but my guess is that it's probably not going to be fantastic. The final disadvantage to this property is just that it's going to be very much a manual labor type of project. Uh, I've already started clearing trees out for some food plots so any sort of work that I do in terms of that is just going to be done with my chainsaw and just my arms. <laughs> and so 
I'm going to get out there and I'm just going to keep cranking on it and, and it'll probably be a process and a journey. It'll probably take me a few years to really get things at where I want them to be at. Even though it's a small property, it's going to take some, some time and some effort to, uh, to really get it where I want it to be at. So I want to thank you for watching this video. Hope you take a moment to like and subscribe to my channel because I got a whole string of ideas of videos that I'm going to be pulling together here to take you along the journey of me doing this habitat work on my property uh, that'll give you just a good solid visual for it and hopefully my goal is that you guys can give me some advice uh, and that maybe you can take a few things out of uh, what I'm doing and hopefully apply it to your property and uh, we can as a community together um, create the best possible hunting on our hunting grounds.